so good. Yes. You brought us through this day. Uh, and you brought us through it out here. First time in January. You brought us back that we can come in fellowship with one another and the wish of God in spirit and in truth. And to learn more about his holy word. That we might be an instrument for him um, that those that do not know him for the point of their sin, they might be saved. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight by saying Jesus is on the main line. And we'll have scripture, prayer, and uh, after that, we'll go into our Bible study. Yes, sir. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. so many uh, individuals, uh, people that's in this world today that stands in the need of prayer. Um, we just start with the nations. Uh, we know that there's wars and rumors of wars and we know that there's a war going on uh, in Ukraine and it's not a scrimmage, it's a war. And people are suffering and people are dying needlessly but all because they do not know God. If they knew God, they would know better not to take other people's life, but the word of God says that thou should not kill. So we as humans, we just continue to do it. 
regardless, regardless of what, it, what, the world, what God said in his word. We know that there's uh, disasters that's going on. Um, we have flooding. Um, that's in Puerto Rico. And uh, we know that uh, we're in that uh, uh, period of time where there's going to be uh, hurricanes and more hurricanes coming in through the, the uh, southern part of the Atlantic. So we want to continue to pray for those that are uh, afflicted in, in, in whatever way it might be. We know they're suffering and they need prayer. Uh, we know that, that we as a country, we just have so much hatred for one another. Uh, we have gotten to the point now where we have to we justify hatred, trying to justify it, thinking that that's all right to hate someone and, and to take uh, uh, the, the words uh, in the scripture, uh, speaking of, uh, of what we should do to love one another and to love one another and to uh, uh, to to uh, love one another instead of hating, and now they're taking the words, uh, human uh, words. I, I, I say human words, uh, the flesh, and they're justifying it through uh, the laws, uh, through lawyers, and so forth to make what was good, bad, and what was uh, bad, good. And that's not what the Word of God tells us. He tells us to love one another as ourselves. It's just so much hate. And then we know that we have uh, physical pain, uh, spiritual pain uh, in our society, at home, in our churches, and schools, and playgrounds, and in, in the cities, and in, the, in the states, and uh, we know that we all stand in the need of prayer. Um, we need to continue to pray that, that people, more people will come to the knowledge of God and, 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 and kick pride to the, to the curb and understand what love is. And, and this would be a wonderful place to live here on earth. But I uh, know the word of God is telling us and letting us know that, that uh, we're living in the end, in the end time. And we can see what is, um, is going to happen to this old earth that we live on. And uh, God didn't provoke, God did not uh, place uh, create the heavens and the earth for us to destroy and destroy ourselves. So we're going to be mindful of all the people that stand in the need of us. So if you know anyone that stands in the need of prayer, uh, call out their names and we'll pray for them. We'll also pray prayer for them. The floor is open for requests. We want to continue to pray for uh, the marriage board and the dancing board. holy and eternal God, uh, we, we come to, to, uh, to you tonight uh, for uh, 
prayer for those individuals that stand in need of. We know, Lord, that uh, we um, pray for each other, but we just want to thank you for, for uh, allowing the Tritons to go on their vacation and to, and to uh, allow them to enjoy and you brought them back uh, here safe. And we thank you for that, Lord. We, we, we be always uh, mindful of the fact that you are a God of blessings too. And then, Lord, uh, uh, you're always a God of blessings. And then, Lord, uh, we come tonight just thanking you for being so good to us. Um, you woke us up this morning and you didn't have to do it, Lord, but you woke us up and you uh, blessed us with having a reasonable amount of health and a reasonable amount of strength. And then you uh, allowed us, oh Lord, to go through our daily activities and, and uh, you kept, them, kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And then you brought us back out here to the house of prayer one more time that we will be able and we are able to hear the word of God. And to exercise our, 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 our ability, our minds to receive the Word of God. Not only to receive the Word of God, but we ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless us, that we will be ambassadors and be a witness to you, to your Word, and to carry the Word into the hands of salvation by way, to, sell, to tell sinner men, boys, and girls what they should do to be saved. And then, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless new life in a mighty way that we'll continue to focus upon the highest calling, which is in Christ, in, in Christ Jesus. And then we ask, Lord, for uh, a blessing here for us in our kingdom building, Lord. We're still, Lord, uh, uh, striving and uh, struggling, waiting patiently. Uh, for uh, the erection of our fellowship hall. And we know, Lord, that uh, uh, you tell us to be patient, and we are. But Lord, we know that we stand in the need of a place where we can uh, have the young folks to meet together, and they can be uh, separate to the point where they can uh, have their uh, uh, children's church uh, where they won't have to be uh, tied down to um, a uh, listening to the word of God in the sanctuary. So we just ask, Lord, for that blessing. We are patient, and we know that you can do it. And we, we're just going to continue to say, Lord, bless us uh, for kingdom building. And then, Lord, uh, we know that uh, there's widows and orphans and the destitutes. So uh, we know, Lord, that there's uh, Margaret uh, uh, problems right now, situations. And we know, Lord, that uh, there's uh, 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 division as far as what to do, how to do it, uh, how to take care of it, how, to process, how this process should go. But we know, Lord, you are a loving God and you know that uh, you have told us in your word uh, that uh, love our neighbors as ourselves. And our neighbors is not just the person across the street, they're throughout the world. So we just ask, Lord, that you would bless us as we do what you would have us to do, Lord. And, uh, and then, Lord, uh, we come uh, praying again for the widows, orphans, and the destitutes. And those who do not have a place that they can call their home, bless our young folks wherever they might be, whether they're in school or in uh, military service or whether they're on the playground, uh, wherever they might be. But we just ask, Lord, that you would uh, bless them and keep a hedge of protection around them and keep them from all hurt and death and danger, Lord. And then, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would bless them, that they will not yield to temptation. And then, Lord, the, uh, the names that was called out tonight uh, from Jolanda, uh, uh, and myself, uh, 
I have and anyone others that had a request but did not uh, come forward to present the names. But Lord, we know that there is names that is uh, of people that are still suffering uh, of past uh, murders. Uh, uh, Evangelist Daddy Ford, my wife, uh, Marine. Um, uh, we know that uh, there's others that's in our midst uh, that stand in the need of prayer. So we just ask you, Lord, that you allow them to take the hem of your garment uh, and, and allow them to overcome the afflictions that they're going, in, going through or the distress, uh, whatever the sickness might be. We ask, Lord, that you bless them, that they will uh, overcome, that they will be delivered and be back into uh, a, a safe uh, situation. Those back in our midst and those that uh, might uh, be, be safe at their homes. So we just <laughs> ask the Lord to continue to bless them, that they will overcome. And then again, continue to bless new life in a mighty way. Continue to bless new life as we continue to focus upon the highest calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Bless our kingdom building. And uh, Lord, uh, we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless our pastor as he continues to be a shepherd overseer of the flock here. And uh, continue to bless him with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that uh, uh, he will be able to lead us. And then, Lord, continue uh, to bless this servant as I continue to walk the street called life and focus in that woman everlasting life. This is my prayer for Christ's sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on Today, this evening, we're going to start with Revelation chapter 21. Amen? Amen. So we've got two chapters left in the book of Revelation. Amen? Amen? And once we finish the book of Revelation, we're going to move on to the Paul's letters to the church, uh, starting in 2 Corinthians. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I went and visited uh, Pastor Emeritus Ford and Evangelist Dr. Dottie Ford. Uh, Pastor Meritus Ford wanted me to let everybody know that he loves you. Uh, he misses all of you and just continue to pray for you. Amen. Amen. And the same would have been Dr. Dottie Ford. Amen. Amen. She's still suffering with that hip. Uh, and like I said, he is he is going through some sickness right now. He is in the hospital. So just keep him lift up in prayer. Amen. 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 I talked to him just before uh, service today. And, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's sounding a whole lot better. Yes, sir. A whole lot better. Okay. Amen. Amen. Now, chapters 21 and chapter 22 of the book of Revelations are a description of the eternal state, following the millennium and final judgment of chapter 20, centering in the New Jerusalem as the eternal habitation of the saved. And if you will, turn your Bibles to Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 22 through 24. And as you do that, I'm just praying this prayer that I've always just taught to pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, work in heaven, please show each and every one of us our mind, body, and soul the wondrous way of your law and to continue to bless us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22. 
through 24 says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and an innumerable or uncountable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Amen. 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 So, and so this new Jerusalem, we're talking about the eternal. We're talking about we're, we're talking about eternity now. The millennium, the millennium period has passed. The, the final judgment has passed. Now we're talking about eternity. Mm -hmm. And it says the first heaven and the first earth are replaced by the new heaven and the new earth predicted by Isaiah. So go to Isaiah chapter 65. Let's say predicted or prophesied by Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. Anybody there? Go ahead and read the preacher. Go ahead and read the preacher. Let me see. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And that heaven is what? The new heaven is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is what? Full, right? right. This is oh, new heaven. Yes. Okay. New heavens and a new earth. Good. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into Amen. Now, chapter 66 of that same book, verse 22. Mm -hmm. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Amen. So the present universe, the universe that we're living right, living in right now, will therefore be cleansed from all the effects of sin. In Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter three, verse seven says, "But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto." Fire against the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. And verses 10 through 13 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall, be, shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing, that, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter of a person ought ye be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens be on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with burning heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwell righteousness. And since there will be no more sea, according to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, mm -hmm. the increased land space will be fully capable of handling large numbers of redeemed people from all ages. Mm -hmm. And the new Jerusalem is fully described in Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, all the way up to Revelation chapter 22, verse 5. And the new Jerusalem is the holy city wholly separated from sin. Amen? Amen? And it is prepared as the habitation of the bride of Christ and the redeemed. And from God in verse 2 of the book of Revelation chapter 21 shows its divine purpose. And out of heaven its divine origin. Amen? Any questions? That's our introduction. Now, but before we get into chapter 21, I would like to discuss something that my wife Veronica brought up a, a couple weeks ago about when she talked about the heavens. And some people think of, when we think of heaven, we think of the heaven where God 
dwell, where he sits on his throne. Amen? But how many heavens are there actually? So go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. So 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. And it says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Rather in the body, I cannot tell, or rather what out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one, such an one, and one caught up to the third heaven. Or I may read, you can read it this way. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Now, whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. But God knows. So when you begin thinking about how many heavens there are, Paul gives us some food, some food for thought. Amen. Amen. What he mentions here is the ideal of a third heaven. Not the ideal, he says a third heaven. And if you're going to apply simple logic, if there's a third heaven, then there must be what? A second and a first. A first and a second heaven. Amen? Amen. And let's be clear, the Bible does not use the term first or second heaven anywhere in Scripture. Okay? And I'm going to use this term tonight, but simply as a means of distinction. All right? And with that in mind, let's consider these three, these three heavens. Go to Psalms chapter 19. Psalms chapter 19, verse 1. Psalms chapter 19, verse 1, if I can get a reader. Psalms chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. So the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies of firmament proclaim the work of his hand. So in this instance, the psalmist is using the word heavens, but he's referring to the sky or the atmosphere around us. Okay? And the glory of God is revealed in the skies and the clouds that we can see. Okay, so if you want to label this, then consider this the first heaven. Okay, we find another example of this first heaven in the book of James. James chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. James chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. James chapter 5. Verse 17 through 18. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Oh, and he prayed again, and the heaven and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Amen. In other words, where does rain where does rain come from? Clouds. Clouds in the sky. Amen. And so Elijah is talking about I mean James here is talking about the atmosphere, the sky, and the earth, the atmosphere being the first heaven. Because in other words, the sky and the clouds gave rain. Okay? Now the second heaven is the stars and the galaxies. So if the atmosphere in the sky are the first heaven, then you could consider the stars and galaxies the second heaven. And again, as a reminder, the Bible does not use this term. Okay? I'm just using it as a term of clarification of distinction. So now go back to Psalms. Verse, chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8 verse 3. Psalms chapter 8, verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Amen. So, so if the first heaven can so if the first heaven can include what we can see, then the second heaven begins to go beyond what we can see. In Hebrews, we see a reference to our Savior who passed through the heavens when he ascended. 
Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Get there, go ahead and read. Seeing then that we have the great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son. Is, is that heavens singular or plural? Plural. Okay. That's through the heavens. Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast. Yes. So he came through the heavens. The heavens. So he was above all the heavens. Yes. So if the atmosphere and the sky are the first heaven, then you consider then you can consider the stars and galaxies as the second heaven. Amen. Now the third heaven is the place where God dwells. Okay. The third heaven was Paul referred to in 2 Corinthians is the place where God's presence dwells and where his throne is. So here are two mentions of this. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And in Acts chapter 7, verses 55 56, it reads, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. These are all pictures and images of heaven where God reigns and rules. And this is the third heaven typically think about when you think about the presence of God. Amen? So we know, based on scriptures, it's how many heavens? Three. Three heavens. Amen. And uh, this can also go back to Genesis 1-1. Yes. 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 Some, said, some translation says heaven, and some translation says heavens. And if we go there, and the King, the King James says in Genesis 1-1, one In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, there are some other translations that God created the heavens and the earth. And we, we, I just pointed out the scripture where it talks about heavens. Isaiah talked about it. Okay. Revelations, what we're about to get into, talks about it as well. Okay. Because we know there's, a, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, right? The heaven that where God dwells is, will not be destroyed by permanence. Okay, so that's one indicator that there's more than the heaven with, in which God dwells. Okay? Any questions or commentary? So, so we're, we're, we're going to be talking about the new heaven and the new earth. Yes. So we, we don't really know where that's going to be. No, we know where it's going to be. But then we'll see in scripture. Let's go, through, let's go through the scriptures. So turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And it reads, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. What does that tell us? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. That is in reference to the sky and the atmosphere and the planet Earth. Okay? Because Satan is, Satan is what? Prince of the air. Got it. That's the atmosphere, the sky, and the system. So keep that in mind. So as the chapter opens, all the sinners of all the ages, both demons and men, including Satan, the beast and false prophet, are in the lake of fire forever. 
And the whole universe has been destroyed. The whole universe. Okay? And God creates a new universe to be the eternal dwelling place of the redeemed. Okay? A new heaven and a new earth. But the entire universe, as we know it, everything we can see today and everything we can look above and see will be destroyed. And, be, and will be replaced by a new creation that will last forever. And this is an Old Testament reality. Remember Isaiah in chapter, six, in chapter 65, verse 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former things and the former shall not, re, not be remembered nor come into mind. So this earth as we know it will be destroyed. Okay? As well as a New Testament uh, prophecy, well, New Testament, in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 21, verse 33, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen? So there's clarification that this planet will be destroyed. And we know that the, the planet Earth was not totally destroyed with the flood, right? I mean, it was destroyed with the flood. But God promised, through the, uh, and he gave a sign through the rainbow that he would never destroy this earth again by what? But the second time it destroyed it, it's going to be by what? By fire. Amen. Now, then it says there is no more sea. Apparently, three-fourths of the earth's surface is water. But the new environment will no longer be water-based and will have a completely different climatic condition. Okay? And... But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that there are in it will be burned up. Okay? Now, God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And the new heaven is the atmospheric heaven around and above the earth. That's the first heaven. And where do we say the second heaven is at? The stars and the galaxies. Amen. And the third heaven is where? Where the deep is well, where God dwells. Amen. So this area has been the domain of Satan. Correct? And this domain must be purified before the heaven of God can come down to the new earth. And this new earth will be a perfect environment similar to that of the garden. So to answer your question, this new earth will be a new earth. It'll be a new earth. Okay? And a unique distinction of this new earth will be that the vast oceans of water that now cover three-fourths of the world's surface will not be included, leaving much more habitable land for the population of the redeemed. Now, this new heaven and new earth are actually a heavenly pattern of what the Garden of Eden was, a ministry. Uh, um, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, the Garden of Eden, the, let's put it this way the earth is going to go back to what God started at the beginning. The Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, it did rain in the Garden of Eden. You know that, right? Plants of water from the beneath the earth, and the waters in the Garden of Eden flowed out into four rivers. All right? Symbolic of, a, of enough for the whole world. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. It wasn't coming into the, into the throne, it was coming out from the throne. And verse 2 says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manners of fruit and yield her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So this river mentioned here this river that flows from the throne of God is the same water that Jesus told the woman about at the well. If she drank it she would never thirst again. Amen? Any questions? Did I ask any questions on your assignment? Something missing? Huh? Not yet. Not yet, okay. So, so this would be physical water. 
Spiritual or yes. spiritual? Yes. Spiritual. Both. The AK section. It's going to be actually water flowing from. Because it says here, pure water, pure river of water of life. So, now, so this shows it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. All right? Y'all got that? Okay. Now, from Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. Up to Revelation 22, verse 5. By this point in the chronological order of Revelation, Old Testament saints, the church, tribulation saints, and all those converted in the millennium kingdom will be incorporated and will dwell in the new Jerusalem and the new earth. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 says, Let us be glad and rejoice. And give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Now, we all are going to have, all who have come to faith in Jesus Christ is going to be part of that first resurrection. Okay. And that's the Old Testament saying, I mean, it's going to come in phases. We talked about that as well. But we're talking about Old Testament saints. Talking about the church, we're talking about tribulation saints, and we're talking about the saints uh, who are converted saints in the millennium period. Okay? And uh, in verse 6, I mean, I'll finish it up. That's it. Blessed and, holy is, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So, so we're covered what? So we're covered tribulation saints. Uh, I mean, let me back up. Old Testament saints, the church, tribulation saints, and the saints who were converted in the millennium period. Okay? Now, we read Hebrews chapter 12 earlier, but 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28, says, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, that's Jesus, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So John, along with the just read scriptures, describe the consummation of all Old Testament saints, the church, tribulation saints, and those converted, and all those converted in the millennium kingdom. The things, they are the things in Christ. And the new Jerusalem descending into eternal Okay. And verse 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, the New Jerusalem, this is the capital city of heaven. Amen. And it's a place of perfect holiness. Notice it says, the holy city. And it's seen, it is seen coming down, John sees it coming down out of heaven, descending into the new heavens and new earth from its place on high, and coming down from God out of heaven. So when it says from God, it's telling us it shows its divine purpose, and out of heaven, it tells us of its divine origin. Then this verse goes on to say, prepared as a wife, adorned for her husband. Now, a lot of people have, there's a lot of issues with some people in, with this particular verse. But I want you to key on, when it says prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband, is it actually a bride? No, it's not. Because it says prepared as a bride. And the words prepared as is significant here because it indicates that the New Jerusalem is not an actual bride, but appears or look like a bride, decorated or put in order for a husband. Okay? And this city is prepared as the bride of Christ. And we'll get into that later in the same chapter. Now, the new Jerusalem will be coming down to the new heaven and the new earth mentioned in verse 1. And the old heaven and old earth, which was, fled away, and was no more. Okay? Now in verses 3 through 5, it talks 
about the tabernacle of God. And we know the, the for you Bible scholars, the tabernacle in the Old Testament represented what? The presence of God. Amen. So the presence of God will be with his people, and he will forever dwell with them. Okay? And the primary purpose of redemption will be accomplished in the complete fellowship of God with his redeemed people. Now, in the eternal state, there will be no tears, death, sorrow, crying, or pain. Everything will become new. And God's purpose are true, and he's always faithful to his word. Now, verse 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So the tabernacle of God, when this happens, will be with me. When, we talk about, when I say men, I'm talking about men, women, boys, and girls. And the tabernacle was the original symbol of God dwelling with his people. In eternity, the redeemed would dwell with God forever. In, the, in, the, in that eternal state, we will not in, only enjoy fellowship with our redeemed loved ones, but we will also have an actual fellowship with God himself. Like my wife, like Veronica mentioned earlier, it's a full circle. Starting with the garden Eden, and it's going back to the garden Eden. Okay? And the tabernacle here means dwelling place of God. No longer will he be afar off. No longer will he be veiled in human form of Jesus Christ in a cloud, a pillar of fire, or in the holies of holies. And heaven to me is whatever she, wherever Jesus is. Amen? And just like God walked with Adam in the Garden of Eden, he will be in heaven with us continually. And the Bible says if we're not ashamed of Jesus here on this earth, he will not be ashamed of us in heaven. He will claim us as his very own. He will fellowship with us all the time. And Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Any questions? Because I know I'm moving right along, but to me it's, the scriptures are real clear. Well, actually, this middle Jerusalem, mm -hmm. this middle Jerusalem is fulfilling a purpose what Jerusalem should have done at the beginning. Uh, the, the nation of Israel. Correct. Be the light of the world. See him face to face. Mm -hmm. This is actually just taking what the Jerusalem should have been. Israel. If, well, yes, of Israel. the new Jerusalem will fulfill the first Jerusalem, you know. Oh, you're talking about Jerusalem? Oh, okay, so what you said, the Jerusalem today. Okay, gotcha. Uh, right, because it's a new Jerusalem, it's called the Holy City. Correct. It's called the Holy City. Anybody? We'll go to our last verse of today. Anybody got any questions? Are you awake back there? Yeah. All right. Now, verse 4 of Revelation chapter 21 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. It says, Wipe away all tears. And since there will never be a tear in heaven, nothing will be sad, disappointed, deficient, or wrong in heaven. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 57 says, For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, this shall be brought to pass the sin that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All tears, pain, sorrow, death, sickness will be removed, will be removed, and that heavenly New Jerusalem where the redeemed will live. Okay, Now this is the exact opposite of the curse that resulted from Adam's sin. Right? Now the effects of the curse are removed and all things are made new. Because when Adam 
see him in a garden, what did God do? What did God tell Adam he was going to have to pour the land? He was going to have to work for everything. And by him sinning in the garden, he brought sin into the world. So with this new heaven, this new earth, this new Jerusalem, sin will not exist anymore. It will not even come in to existence anymore. And why? Because those that are there, that are here in the new Jerusalem, we are all believers. We all believers and we know everything before this, everything Satan and everything else is in him. So, that's what I was looking for. Satan, Antichrist, anybody that can influence any wrong from Satan is now put in the lake of fire for eternity. And this, that's why I said this, this is the eternal state. This is what's going to happen in eternity. Okay? Now, just as the disciples knew security when Jesus was there to take care of, of all their needs, we will know perfect peace and joy in heaven. We talk about the scripture that he gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> This piece is going to surpass all understanding. Because it's not going to be anybody there to influence to do wrong. It's not going to be any sickness. It's not going to be any dying. It's not going to be any of It's not going to be anything that causes us to be in sorrow anymore. This thing's in the eternal state is going to be perfect. You know, when you hear people, and I have heard people say, I don't like to study the book of Revelation because it scares me. Also tells us the end of the story. We may struggle in this lifetime, but the end of the story is that we got a victory in Jesus. Amen. That's the simple fact of it, and we're going to live with Him in perfect peace. Amen. And it's not going to be anybody there to influence us to do contrary to God. The flesh will be no more, right? Because when I went to First Corinthians chapter fifteen, I mean, we're going to get rid of these bodies because these bodies can't go to heaven. Amen. So we're going to be put in a glorified body just when, just like Jesus was put into a glorified body when he ascended to heaven. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, there will be Satan is not really in the abyss. He's in the, he's, he's, he's not in the abyss. He's in the he's, lake he's of fire. Lake of fire. Yeah, yes. Lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So he's no more. He's no more. So, so now if that's when the Garden of Eden, the reason that Sin was there is because the angels were in heaven were kicked out of heaven, right? And they were part of the sin that right. was created. So that's how sin was uh, right. came well, in. Sin came in because of uh, Adam and Eve. Because Adam, well, sin came in by Adam, and by Adam because of the influence that Satan had over him. But, but Satan was. It was no, yeah, it was he in, was yeah. created out of, out of the, when, when he was kicked out of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. That was the, uh, uh, where sin started. And I don't know if kicked out of heaven is a good word uh, okay. to use because we know he goes to a pro today. Uh, yeah. So he was, he, uh, Satan wanted to be God. Mm -hmm. And God, and he took a third of the angels with him right. okay. uh, from heaven. And we know he, he like scripture says, he's the prince of the air. He's, he's the ruler of this system of earth. So, with that being said, it was Satan who influenced Eve to go get the apple, and Adam flat out sin. I mean, not the apple. I'm sorry. The fruit. We always say apple, but he ate of the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Out of disobedience. Out of disobedience. So, 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 so good. But I was getting back to uh, the angel for the relief. went with Satan, they went with Lucifer because Lucifer wanted to be God. So they rebelled against God because Lucifer wanted to be just like God. So God said, not, it's not happening. So yeah, so he kind of, and since he did, he did kick him out of heaven. Yeah. But we know Satan still had access to God today. Though, because he's the accuser of the brethren. But the new, the new heaven, the new heaven, they're, they're, you don't have no opposition no more. No more. Because they're sentenced for eternity in the lake of fire. In the book of Revelation is the end of everything, right? Is that clear? So yes, 
so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be like the new garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Say that. And as we say, you know, God cannot communicate. See. see. And we know that we'll be able to see Him face to face. So yeah. Let us know right now. Because and we won't we die from seeing Him face to face either. Uh -huh. And we won't die from seeing Him face to face either. Yeah. So that let us know right now there will be no sin. No. It, 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 I mean, it's going to be pure. It's like the Garden of Eden was. Amen. Well, I mean, it says it's tabernacle. The tabernacle of God will be with men, which means God is going to walk and walk with us and talk with us. All right. All right. Y'all tired? Yeah, because it, it's. I mean, because we have to remember this takes place after the millennium. Because what happens after the millennium? Satan let loose for a season. And fire going to come down to heaven to destroy him and everybody that follows him. All right? And it's going to be, we talked about Magi. Okay? So once that is done, everything's going to be pure. Burned, the, the new heaven, the new, I mean the heavens, the heaven is going to be destroyed and it's, and it's going to urge in the new heaven and new earth. Coming from heaven. Coming from heaven. issues that we have of today is not going to be an issue there. Like we say, the trouble, you may trouble me down here, but you can't follow me up there. And that's, and, and that's going to be true. So, so uh, we will have a new body. Glorified body. Glorified body. We're going to have a glorified body uh, when we rapture. Right. Okay. But then, uh, a scripture chapter 20 verse 6 where the Christians will not taste the second death mm -hmm. and this fear has gone away and death will no longer hang over the Christians redeemed uh, of the Lord and the Christian will have eternal life and not death mm -hmm. and there won't be any reason to cry in heaven the devil and all his problems he brought upon the redeemer have been thrown into the lake of fire and every negative thing has been done away with as well and our last verse for the night, verse 5, says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I'll make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. So the one who sits on the throne said, Is the same one who presents earth and heaven fled away from it. And according to Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And here we see God sitting on the throne saying that he makes all things new. And when we are saved, we become a new creature, right? Mm -hmm. And we know this saying is true for the believer. God did not throw us away to get a new person. He said, here, I make all things new. Mm -hmm. And he did not say uh, he made things, he made new things. He just takes the old things and transforms them into new things. Okay? And here we see that Jesus commands John to write. Because all things he has been shown are true, and Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm. Truth and faith. Mm -hmm. God always speaks truth because he is the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And we're going to stop right there for the night. Thank you. Good job. Amen? Amen. I don't know. I mean, if you got a question, I mean, I know it's kind of really self explanatory. It's not, I don't think it's really hard to follow because it's really simple when it says it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Yeah. But you know what, what, what uh, makes it important? I'm makes, sorry, Dick. What, what makes it important for us right now is that we will be uh, believers and we will be in, in, uh, with God. We'll be caught up. That's what it's important that we are caught up to be with Him. Mm -hmm. Because uh, um, if we're, if we're not, we're not going to be. 
be there. No. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, only ones who's gonna, the only ones who's gonna share in this, are the ones who have come to faith in Christ. Uh, those who live their life with Christ, those who have professed with their mouth, those who know in their heart that God raised Him from the dead and sits at the right hand of the power, and that He is the Son of God, and that they live their life for Him. Those are the ones who's going to be a part of this. The ones who have not received Him will not be a part of this. And you know, if God's whole plan was to, He made the lake of fire and hell for who? Satan and his imps. But because of man's rebellion, those who don't come to faith, that's where they're going to go as well. So it's like Veronica was saying, this, this should bring, bring joy to all of us to know that one day we're going to be, we're going to be with God. We're going to be with God. And, and, it's, it's, and it's no, there will be no more issues. You know, you prayed, you talked about before you prayed about the, the hatred, the dissension, the, the fight against each other. The, the, all those things will be none existence in heaven. In heaven, the new heaven and the new earth and the holy city of Jerusalem. Alright? Uh, next time you have a joke, we want to, we want to hear the joke too. <laughs> Let me just make this laugh. Amen. If there's no more questions, let us pray. <coughs> Father, Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And Father, before we leave this place, Father, we just want to lift up to you Pastor our marriage is forward, Father. We just pray that you look over him. And if it's in your will, Father, you let your will be done, Father, in his life. We pray for comfort and peace for him, as well as uh, Baptist Dr. Dottie Ford, Father. We just pray that you be with him and just comfort him. And Father, we also lift up everyone who's here present and those who are watching via Facebook. We pray that you continue to bless them, bless their lives and, and, and bless uh, all of us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, and that you continue showing us the way in your word, Father, so we may live our life for you. And as we leave this place, Father, we just pray that you surround us with your hedges of protection, giving you all the praises, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.